Howard Ron? Uh, I'm here, sort of. Okay. <laughs> Brooke Carlson? Here. David Friedman? Here. Ed Goodale? Here. Gail Listener? Here. Steve Ross? Here. And John Satter? Here. Well, the first uh, order of business is the uh, consideration of the minutes of the February 1st meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Any comments? Move we approve as submitted. I have a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, at this point in our meeting, uh, we call for comments uh, from uh, people who are here on a matter that's not on the agenda. If someone is here this evening with a comment or question, issue, concern, uh, which is not on the agenda, please stand up and let's hear it. Anything? Well, with uh, nothing, uh, no comments from, from the, uh, uh, the group here, I'd like to uh, turn it over to uh, the, the business at hand, which are uh, three matters to consider. And if you will be speaking uh, to us this evening, uh, would you please stand? And that would be for all three applicants or neighbors. All three matters. Whoever might want to speak. Uh, you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth and the matter about to be heard? Thank you. Well, the first order of business uh, is the consideration of the TROP variation request. And uh, the TROPs have requested permission to construct a rear one-story sunroom addition to their home on Sycamore. And the proposed addition requires a reduction in the rear yard uh, building line setback from 30 feet to 25.5 feet. Uh, if there's someone here who will be making the presentation this evening for the TROPs, if you would uh, come to the microphone and, and let us know why we should approve this request. Um, hi guys, I'm Lisa Rizzolo from LA Rizzolo Architects. Um, I'm representing uh, David and Donna Trump. Um, they've done trots, sorry. <laughs> wow, wow, sorry about that. Uh, they have a split level over on the corner of uh, Sycamore and Forestway. And uh, the setbacks are subset, we need a rear yard setback. Um, uh, if we're doing a one-story sunroom that will have some heat in it, no air conditioning. It's really kind of more than a screen and porch, less than a four-season room. Um, the size of the space will be 17.6 by 12.6, and all the detailing will match the existing house. We'll match the horizontal uh, windows of the house uh, that were replaced in the last 10 years. Um, and uh, it's a pretty simple addition. Uh, without the variation, the sunroom would be less than 10 feet, which is not really a usable space for a public to, or demo space. So that's what we're asking for. I see from the request that there was plenty of excess FAR, and you're not before this board requesting anything of that nature. No, and initially when we started, we were going, we were thinking about asking for a side yard and rear yard, but we designed it such that we just are asking for a rear yard. We shifted it over slightly, so um, to make it as clean and simple as possible. So the dimensions of the um, sunroom were 12.6 by 17.6? So again, if, if you did not request the uh, variation, what would the dimensions be again? Uh, it could be anything. The 17 sixes, as you know, we could go as wide as we want, but it would be nine feet, four inches, I believe, um, so outside dimension. So it would be a really nine tough space. It would be a tough space. Your drawing, uh, I, this was what was attached with the crosshatch? Uh, not quite the scale. It is to scale. <laughs> but uh, uh, I get I get the, the point on that. Any yeah. questions? Mm -hmm. No uh, comments or any uh, neighbors. Well, there is a, a Sycamore neighbor here 
uh, tonight. And uh, would you like to? No, I, I fully endorse the drops plan. And we didn't receive uh, any other letters or? No, we had no other comments. Who, who are you, sir? What's your oh, name? My name's Jonathan Towers. We're right across the street from Thank the you. drops. Thank you. I have a motion? Move we approve the uh, requested variation of uh, Donna Trump. And second. Second. Rowan? Aye. Carlson? Yes. Friedman? Yes. Goodale? Yes. Listener? Yes. Satter? Yes. And Ross? Yes. It's approved. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Second matter before us this evening is the consideration of the Weinberg Wolf variation request. Margot Weinberg and Alan Wolf have requested permission to reconstruct an existing two car detached garage at their home at 340 Hawthorne. The proposed project requires a variation permitting reconstruction of an existing detached garage located 0.82 feet from the east lot line where a four foot setback would be required and 1.14 feet from the south lot line where a five foot setback would be required. Um, Alan, I believe, is uh, uh, here to tell us why we should approve this and uh, perhaps could give us some history on how the current uh, condition came about. Thank you very much. Um, my wife, Margo, and I moved here in 1985. And the house that we moved into at 340 Hawthorne uh, had been built prior to the time that we first moved here. Uh, and in fact, our garage, um, John has let me know, was built in 1920. Um, and come Thanksgiving of last year, in 2015, we had an unexpected guest come for dinner, and that was our neighbor's tree. And I'll just pass that along. And Dutch elm disease had apparently uh, diseased this particular tree, uh, and it managed to fall directly on top of our garage. Um, the picture that you're looking at uh, was taken shortly after that occurred. Uh, we then had snow. We then had ice. And the garage roof continued to plow down until we had a little bit of a pancake. Um, Allstate Insurance Company uh, was kind enough to finally come out uh, and demolish what was left of the garage and then determine that the pad concrete pad or the asphalt pad, I guess it's concrete, um, had over the years since 1920 uh, buckled. And as a result, in order to construct a new garage, uh, the concrete pad would have to be excavated and a new pad installed or poured. Uh, that, of course, would take until spring. Um, and then we determined, after talking with John, that we were not grandfathered to allow the new garage to sit on the footprint of the existing garage from 1920, but rather there was a setback requirement both on the side lot and on the back lot. Um, we live on a relatively modest sized lot, uh, and there's a little bit uh, of a significant difficulty if we were to comply with the existing requirements for the side and the back setbacks. Uh, so I come here tonight before you to request that we be allowed to rebuild our garage. We have a quote which I provided to um, the village from Michael Thomas Construction, from, you know, one, one of the Allstate recommendants, uh, to rebuild the garage as it previously existed. Um, it turns out that John advises that the, the suggested new plans are approximately a little bit bigger than the old garage was, but when the contractor goes in for the, for the necessary permits to build it, 
Um, I guess in 1920, the length of the car was a little bit less. Um, but I'm not here today asking for an increase in the size of the garage, simply that the pad be allowed to be re-poured without having to comply with the existing setbacks for the back and the side. Um, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, we supplied the village with the contract from Michael Thomas Construction together with the design details. Um, and it should be a duplicate of what we had before, although I think that the construction materials have changed somewhat in the last 95 years. John, if, if, the, uh, if the slab was not required to be removed because of its current condition, would this still have required the variance? Yeah, any accessory building with non-conforming setbacks requires a zoning variation. Thanks. You don't on a house, but you do on a garage. The, um, if, if you had uh, moved the uh, proposed garage to meet the current uh, setbacks, you know, moved it out to the four feet or the five feet, uh, the the edge of the two-car garage would have uh, then become very, very close, if not impacting your rear yard, your your uh, patio, uh, things of that nature. I, th I think you should mention that, uh, that it would be uh, very detrimental to the use of your existing and enjoyment of your existing backyard if that uh, garage had been shifted. Um, thank you very much for suggesting that, but you're absolutely correct. Uh, the hardship would have been that uh, our driveway would have been like the old Lakeshore Drive S-curve before even that was corrected. And it probably would have been impossible uh, to get on the driveway, which is a relatively narrow driveway um, between the house and our next door neighbor, Jordan Miller's house. Um, it would have been nigh on impossible to get through that driveway around the existing patio and into a garage that would have complied with the setback. Um, so it absolutely would have been a hardship for us. Is that your fence where, where the portion no, of the fence No, it's Jordan is? Miller's. Mm -hmm. uh, who's lived there, gosh, he, Jordan was old before we moved in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you gonna rebuild the fence for him? Um, he's, he's actually rebuilt it a couple of times. Um, and the good news is Jordan had Allstate Insurance, uh, the same company that we had. So when the neighbor's tree came down, not only did it take out my garage and part of his fence, but also part of his porch. Um, and now we're waiting for the neighbor to get rid of the other diseased Dutch elm that's back there. Uh, any questions, comments from the I just want to know for the record, the garage width is 18 feet. It was there by 20 feet, and that's what the slab is, and that's what can be rebuilt. That's the limit to the size of the garage that can be rebuilt with the location there. And a, and a modern two-car garage would be 20? It be built but it would be footprint. at least 20, right? Mm -hmm. On the width, it would typically be 20. Yeah. And the depth, John, what would that typically be? Only because I'm not a... Uh, 20 or 22, we have both that we see on detached structures. So the depth is, doesn't really allow room for storage, but it allows room for the vehicle. John, the neighbors? Yeah, any, any, John, any, any comments from the neighbors? No, there's been no contacts from the neighbors. I have a motion. Uh, move so I'll, I'll move we approve this. Thank you. Let me go, Howard. From a, from, I'm going to move from Aspen that we approve this because we don't punish people who have trees fall in their garages. This is neighbors helping neighbors. Yeah. I'll second that from Mike Bell. Rowan? Aye. Carlson? Yes. Friedman? Yes. Goodale? Yes. Listener? Yes. Oh, uh, Satter? Yes. And Ross, sorry. Yes. Did one of those out of order. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Good luck. In keeping with our... Uh,
brevity in the spirit of Howard moving this along. Uh, the next matter before us is the consideration of the Huvard variation request. Bruce Huvard has requested permission to construct a two-story room addition at his home at 450 Drexel. The proposed addition requires a 20% reduction in the west side yard building line setback from 8 feet to 6.4 feet. Ms. Sheldon, is it? Stewart. Stewart. Stewart is here to uh, make the presentation and to uh, let us know why we should approve this. Yes, uh, Stewart Shane and I'm uh, architect for uh, Bruce and uh, Susan Hubbard. And what we're looking to do is a uh, decrease in the uh, west side yard setback from uh, the minimum of eight feet to... Uh, Can you come a little closer, please? Oh, sure. This, we're going to be uh, enlarging the kitchen and taking over the uh, current powder room and then creating a new powder room and a uh, uh, little uh, mud room area back uh, entry. Uh, then at the front, um, the, uh, with the current setback, we can't get a, an overhang over the front door. So there are two requests, but it's the uh, same it's the issue. Same request of the side yard setback, mm -hmm. but uh, two conditions. Two areas, right? Um, at the front, it's just uh, creating a little um, uh, three-foot extension over the uh, over the front door. Um, what happens then? Also, uh, this addition would be uh, two stories, so it would create a little. Uh, walking closet at the second floor next to the bedroom. So in terms of the, the front uh, sh shed roof, it's, um, extending out a little shed, uh, talk about the utility of that, what the importance of what, why is that a nice feature or a good uh, feature for the uh, homeowner? Currently, there's uh, absolutely nothing there, and anybody walking up to the front door in rain or snow is going to get soaked. And um, uh, this will help uh, alleviate that a little bit. And it's in conjunction with repairing the the other projection in the front. Yes. Uh, right now, there's a, um, a sunroom at the front, and the uh, roof on that is not in very good shape. And in the rear yard, uh, the addition of a mud room and then shifting the powder room, expanding the kitchen, these are sort of very basic things in a, in a uh, modernization of a Glencoe house, an older house. Yes, the, it's, there's a detached garage and uh, so the main entry um, for the homeowners is through the rear and uh, they currently just walk right into this office and into the kitchens. There's a little space there. The uh, current kitchen is inadequate and it's a very, a relatively easy um, fix to um, uh, be able to take over uh, the 
the space of the current power room uh, for this. And, and also not create any other access points that would be contrary to the floor plan, like popping through the dining room from the... Yes, it's a fairly uh, logical uh, flow and plan um, and uh, works well with uh, uh, what they have and uh, what they're looking for. And what about the FAR, the, uh, how much FARs, I think you mentioned that somewhere in here that the that there's no request for a change in packet. No, we're still. Uh, it's number four on your, or maybe it's our summary. Under, I believe. It says here the maximum allowable FAR would be 2,800, and you have about 2,100. Yes. So, you know, although there was plenty of FAR, and you could have come to us and extended the west wall, the west side of the house, all the way back, that's not what you did here. I mean, that, um, that west... No, the, we the west wall, we were limited by the... Uh, setback. By the setback. Um, we could have uh, extended the, uh, the current office further back, okay. but that would have cut out the... Uh, uh, for the functions we were looking for, it would have cut out the light and views mm -hmm. to the yard. Talk to us about the tree, because you made mention of that in your presentation, your submittal. Uh, there's currently a, uh, like a double red oak um, that would be impacted. We're not building over it, but it would be impacted by, uh, uh, by this construction. Uh, we had an arborist out there who said that, that these trees were in very bad shape. I don't know if anybody had a look at them, but uh, one of them is pretty well hollowed out, um, and uh, we would like to uh, take these down prior to uh, uh, to this construction because it will be that much more difficult to try to work around it and then uh, uh, come back in a couple of years and try to remove them because uh, um, uh, our arborist is saying I also saw the double trunk oak and it is considered a hazard tree, so as an arborist I would agree with the analysis of Mr. Stewart. So the roots of that tree go under the area that you would be? It's current, we're, we're, we're currently, the new construction is actually um, where there's currently a, uh, a back stair and mm -hmm. patio. So it's impervious now. So we're not really, we're not increasing any impervious uh, surface. In fact, uh, by the time we're done, um, because of the areas of the patio that we're cutting out, we'll be decreasing impervious. But um, uh, the roots of the tree are under this impervious uh, surface now. And I, I just had one last question or point and then turn it over to the board. The, the upstairs work is uh, a closet. Could you describe that? The, what goes above the mud room and the powder room? Uh, above the, med, uh, above the mud room, the uh, roof line will, uh, uh, our new roof line will continue. We're, as part of this, we're also talking about uh, replacing the current flat roof, which is over the, um, uh, the second floor sitting dressing area uh, with the pitched roof and uh, the, um, as the roof line comes down we'd be creating a little uh, shed dormer um, which would uh, add closet space to the second floor. Uh, we're still well within the, um, or we're within the um, setback I just think these are very minor changes to make a very much older house more functional and modern. And uh, you know, the question is whether there are any neighbor issues, uh, John. 
No, we had no contact from any other neighbors. So that's how I see it. Questions? Move to accept the variation request of Bruce Huvard to construct a two-story addition at 450 Drexel Avenue. Second the motion. Carlson? Yes. Friedman? Yes. Gooddale? Yes. Listener? Yes. Rowan? Aye. Sander? Yes. And Ross? Yes. It's approved. Well, I think that brings us to the end of our meeting. We have a motion to adjourn. Thank you. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Good night. Aye. <laughs> Good night, Howard. Thank you very much. I, I want to congratulate everybody for pulling this off. Steve, you were Socratic, and uh, it, it couldn't have been smoother or faster. Well, we look forward to uh, seeing you back here in charge, taking on well, the tough you know, cases, I'm, tough issues. Yes, right. Um, but, you know, sometimes you just have to go skiing. Ski.